Real estate investing can be a great way to build wealth and is often a go-to strategy to create generational wealth. These are hard assets that can be passed on to the next generation and be used to generate income in the form of rent or be used as collateral for loans to fund further wealth building ventures. Real estate investing is also something not to be done half-hearted. If you don't have the right structure in place to manage your investing, then you may expose yourself or your family to liability or expensive debts. So today we're tackling the fundamental question of what to do with your real estate. Should it go in a trust or an LLC? I'm attorney Andrew Bethel, and I wanna say thank you so much for watching. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more, please subscribe and ring the bell. And of course, leave a comment below if you have any questions or have a topic you want me to cover. I try to reply to everyone, so feel free to say hi. To start, the baseline rule for what to do with any real estate you might have, whether it be your primary residence or an investment property, is to make sure it avoids probate. Probate is court oversight to manage someone's estate if they have no written instructions or only basic wishes, such as a will. All real estate triggers probate unless the proper planning is done, so if all else fails, at least put your properties in a trust. I talk about this all the time, so I'll just leave it there. Right off the bat, so long as you are following the basic rule of at least avoiding probate on each property, then depending on your level of comfortability and sophistication, you can structure your empire however you like. But I would caution you to keep two principles in mind. One, don't overcomplicate things, and two, don't overspend when you don't have to. When building your empire, the last thing you want to do is spend extra time doing administrative housekeeping and spending money on services and fees you don't really need. With that, if you're looking for the simplest method with the lowest cost overall, then a trust is going to be your best bet. With a trust, you simply title your property into the name of your trust, which you can have escrow do when initially purchasing the property, or do fairly easily later with a deed. After that, you're kind of off to the races. The property now avoids probate, thus saving your family money on court and attorney fees. You can get insurance on the property as you would anyway. Also, depending on the type of trust, you're not going to have a yearly maintenance fee as you would with an LLC, for example. And taxes each year will be pretty straightforward, especially if it's a revocable trust. Now, the title of the video mentions land trust. A land trust can mean a few different things as there isn't necessarily a set definition of what a land trust must be. Generally, it's a trust that will operate as a typical trust but its main purpose or intent outside of avoiding probate is to manage one type of asset, real estate. They can have some specific provisions in them for managing real estate specifically. However, for some inside baseball, unless you are in the realm of land conservation or developing properties, then those provisions are going to be substantially similar to those you would find in a typical revocable living trust. A bit of specific tailoring for the situation along with managing only real estate is usually what makes a trust a land trust. However, for most people, when they are real estate investing, it's usually an income generating venture from rents and or buying and selling or flipping property. At that level, it's usually a good idea to look at an entity like an LLC. On that note, let's finally talk LLCs. Entities like LLCs are very popular for real estate investing for many reasons. There's a nice air of legitimacy since you have a business structure. You keep your business stuff in your business box as opposed to mix with your personal assets, meaning when it comes time to sell or exit the business, you can sell your entire business box easily. And perhaps the most enticing prospect, there is separation when it comes to liabilities of the business from your personal assets. If someone sues the business, they can only collect against the business assets, not your personal assets unless they are able to pierce the corporate veil, which is not easy, but also not what we're talking about right now. LLCs are also where we see people easily overcomplicate the situation and end up overspending. Think about it. You have a business box with liability separation from it. Well, why not create another box for another asset? Now they're protected from each other as well as protected from you, or you are protected from them. Now you have your Los Angeles rental property in the Los Angeles box and the Palm Springs commercial property in another box. It makes it all nice and orderly and you can always sell off an entire box when you're done with it. You may have already caught on that now because I have two entities, I now have two sets of filing to do with the state. I have two sets of financials to keep track of. 
I have two insurance policies to hold and pay for. I also have two sets of initial startup fees to create the entities. And the big thing that irks most people, I now have to pay two sets of yearly licensing fees at $800 each. I've seen folks create an LLC for each property only to come back a year later, dissolve them all but one, and move everything into that one LLC because they didn't like paying an additional $800 per year for each LLC. From experience, we typically only advise having more than one LLC in specific circumstances. One example is where someone was investing in a property with two others and they wanted to have an LLC together. Another example is someone who had property in California and Oregon. The Oregon property was in an LLC, their California properties were in another LLC. There wasn't a legal requirement to do that. A California LLC can hold Oregon and California property, much the same way an Oregon LLC can hold Oregon and California properties together. This was simply a case where an already sophisticated investor wanted to have that degree of separation as a possible exit strategy for the business. By that I mean if he ever wanted to finally fully retire, then he could sell each individual property or sell the California LLC holding all the California properties to a California real estate investor. Essentially, here, take the California box with the California assets all together. With that, I wanna give you an idea of what considerations you should have in mind when deciding which kind of structure is best for you. Now, I know I haven't talked about every little detail. For instance, I haven't talked about insurance, but this video is already a little long, so I think these considerations will point you in the right direction when deciding for yourself. Of course, always speak to a lawyer before ultimately deciding. Again, these are the considerations you should keep in mind and be weighing against each other when deciding. If you're concerned about dictating the distribution of your estate or guiding that generational wealth, a primary concern is avoiding probate, you wanna keep the costs low or save money, and you want to simplify the administration of your estate as much as possible, then you should lean towards a trust. If you have any real estate, even just a home, then you should have a trust already, so chances are, well, you already have one, and it's almost like a set it and forget it method. However, if your main concern includes an exit strategy, whether it be selling the assets or business, bringing in new members or something like that, you really want liability protection, and you want that separation from your personal assets, then a business structure like an LLC is likely your best bet. Keep in mind, your LLC interests should be assigned to your trust so as to avoid probate, which again, you likely will have a trust regardless. Additionally, LLCs mean more administrative overhead and yearly fees, so don't go overboard creating too many walls around yourself that you lose the ability to ultimately be flexible. Click here to learn whether trustees are liable for paying a trust's debts or check out this other video.